Hello, it's day 108 of the Liberator project and uh, here we are in my kitchen again. I know it's getting a bit boring the same location but the weather's cold and dark and horrible so you know it uh, we're stuck in I'm afraid. Now um, the whole point of this uh, channel was to show me selling up and uh, buying a catamaran and going sailing but uh, part of the long part of the process quite a big part is actually the selling up part now that's very very um, tedious to capture on video because you know what can I show you I can show you me sorting out boxes of stuff and deciding what to leave very boring I mean it might come to that at some point but you know let's just try and keep the channel interesting so I thought you know why not it's a uh, it's a weekend I'll, I'll do some uh, cooking for you just keep the channel interesting once once I've got the boat or once I'm you know, I've got the workshop and I'm building stuff. No trouble trying to fill things because I can just talk about what I've been doing. But given the fact that listing stuff on eBay is, is incredibly tedious, really, really tedious, um, I think it's better if I, I do the odd video of uh, music or acting or uh, cooking. And uh, right, well, let's go for the uh, project. Well, I'm still very ill. I've, my immune system's kicking off. I really don't feel... Uh, very good at all but still got indigestion still you know still out of sorts I think is the phrase still not feeling my usual self and um, I'm going to look into that but uh, you know one thing at a time the uh, but anyway I am actually wearing some foundation again today because otherwise my face was bright scarlet and uh, I thought it, it made such a dramatic difference yesterday I thought yeah I'll, uh, I'll push the boat out spoil <laughs> spoil you and uh, make the effort for the channel so i hope you appreciate that it uh, you know i can't do much about the swelling or everything else but at least i'm, I'm flesh colored so there we are i hope you uh, hope you enjoy the uh, the effort i make for you anyway that's boring stuff let's get on to the cooking now as ever the most important part about cooking is we're going to do some wines now today we've got a choice of wines because I bought, uh, I had some uh, Chilean wine laid on, and then uh, my friend Neil recommended Oxford Landing, so I bought these in as well. Now, with, with everything I say about cooking, all the ingredients are up to your personal taste. You can use as much or as little as you want, so you don't, you know, just because there's five bottles there, that will be a bit keen. Prepared to give it a try, but it's, it's a bit too keen. What we're going to do is, uh, I thought, be a bit. You know, let's bring some culture to the channel. I'll do a wine tasting. So here we have wine number one. This is a Chilean, a Chilean Sauvignon Blanc. Again, I'm from Essex. That might not be how it's pronounced at all. Pretty certain it's not how it's pronounced. This um, little beauty is 12% <laughs> by volume alcohol and it's £4.25 a bottle so high quality stuff and it's up against as a rival this is the challenger this is what Neil recommended this is Oxford Landing Sauvignon Blanc and this is well <laughs> I'll tell you about that went to um, Morrison's and it was now uh, it was gone up it, oh, sorry it was now £6.25 a bottle but they didn't do the uh, two for three offer but I went down to Asda and this was, I think it was about uh, 6 50 but um, they did a special offer where you could get uh, three bottles for £15. So this comes in at £5 a bottle, which is well within budget for this channel. That's what we expect from a wine. And uh, potentially looks very good. And But it's uh, it's a mere, was it 10.5 I think? I better check, yeah. It's a mere 10.5% by alcohol. So it better be taste very nice. It's, you know, it's 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 definitely it's definitely not the favourite wine of the selection so far. Okay, so wine number one. This is the Chilean. Well, it's got a sort of um, vinegary aftertaste, rather or <laughs> a rather a astringent bouquet, and. Uh, uh, it's um, yeah, it's got a. There's a whole. 
a whole plethora of different tastes and flavours going off in that wine and they're not always very complementary to each other but uh, let's concentrate on the fact this is 12% by volume and it was £4.25 so as a result that's uh, I think that's still a bit of a bargain it is drinkable I mean I've had some wines that uh, have just been you know well the end of the night they still go but they really are a struggle to get through them and uh, here we have number two this is Oxford Landing and that's a much smoother wine it doesn't um, it's not startling it's much smoother um, it tastes a little bit um, not sour it tastes a little bit like the fruit isn't quite uh, unified with the whole body of the wine obviously I'm not a wine expert I'm just a guy that drinks wine when he cooks so um, it's while <laughs> it's it's not a great wine it is actually uh, definitely the far nicer of the two so you know I, uh, I agree with Neil's taste on this this is a, a good recommendation and uh, you know I know it's only you know 10.5 but you can always knock a few vodkas back after that hit a few shots and this will be fine that's my uh, top advice as a wine connoisseur okay now we're going to go on to the uh, cooking side of it um i prepared a lot of dishes in advance that's not you know th there's nothing to this dish really but um i i've done this just so i can cook everything while i'm talking to you and uh, you know, we're, we, <laughs> well, I might not be able to cook everything while I'm talking to you, but, um, you know, we are good to go. And, uh, you know, bear with me if I start dropping stuff, then I might have to do a part two. But provisionally, we can, we're good to do the whole dish start to finish. And uh, the reason stuff's just in bowls is just for speed. So, step number one, you've got to um, imbibe the wine. So, we'll, uh, you know, hope you're taking notes. Mm. Oh yes. <laughs> I could have actually done this in advance, because I'm gonna basically um I don't want to drink the, the water in Watford, it tastes horrible, and everything you cook or use with it has got a horrible scum on the top, so I'm actually using some uh, spring water. So all I've got in here that's the method of my water. Uh, I know I said I was making cunning linguini but I've actually got tagliatelle. Again, you know, it doesn't matter. It's all just, it's all just basically compressed bread in different shapes. So, okay, this is more ribbon-like, but uh, you know, it's it's fine. It's it's pasta. That's what the dish needs. So I'm uh, just putting in a sprinkling of salt. I really, I don't like salt, but you do need it when you're cooking, I'm afraid. So that goes in. Okay, that can be. Again, I should have done that really before we started the video because it take a while to boil. You know how long pasta takes, it's not, you know, we're talking here five, ten minutes. So uh, the video is getting too boring. Okay, well, I cut and do a part two. That's, uh, that's the first part. Now, pasta, now we do the sauce. Now, in here, we have... All that is, is sour cream. Now... I just put it in the saucepan for again for speed. Just soured cream. I usually get a large pot, but they didn't have any, so I've got two small pots. Again, all the uh, all the ratios when you're cooking depends on your taste and what's available and what's knocking around your fridge, and you can substitute ingredients as you feel like. So don't let's not get precious. Just enjoy yourself while you're cooking. I I, usually, I really enjoy cooking. <laughs> Mm. Right, now into this pan, the sour cream. You don't want to boil this, you just want to warm it through. So very low heat. Right. Basically everything that's going into the sauce is already cooked. So you don't need to actually cook it in the pan, you just need to warm it all through and unify it. Again, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not a trained chef, I'm just doing this from what I've had to do to survive as a bachelor. Okay, into the uh, sour cream. Now, what I've done here is I've got some fried onions. Now, you know, that's uh, half an onion or a small onion. You don't need very much of this. It's, um, and in fact, 
you know, if you're doing this for speed, don't worry about it. Just uh, forget that, forget these ingredients. But um, the dish is a bit, uh, dish is a bit nicer with them. Um, so you just basically, you know, chop half an onion or a small onion, fry it ideally in beef dripping, but uh, I've run out, so I'm using vegetable oil at the moment. And uh, that just goes into the, into the sour cream. Ugh. Well, most of it, most of it goes into the sour cream. We, we're not worried about those bits. Just stir that in. So that's number one. Now, next ingredient is, as this is um, basically a fish dish, I'm using tuna. Now this is um, basically, it's any cheap tuna, and it's, um, you've got to make sure it's in brine though. It can't be, it can't be in oil, it's got to be in salt water. Now I'm not draining this. This would have been, the fact it's in a bowl is just for one-handed convenience. The um, um, you don't want to drain it. You want to put all the salt water that comes with these tins into the into the sauce as well, because otherwise the sour cream on its own is much too thick. So you need to thin it. So we'll put that in. Again, that's uh, that's most of it in there. So just stir that in. Okay. Now you need something to give it some texture. I mean, basically. I'm an engineer, so I'm doing it like an engineer would. Basically, your sour cream is the sort of emulsion that holds everything together. The tuna gives it the real taste. And then you need um, some vegetables or something to give it a bit more uh, texture and make it a bit more exciting. So, what I'm uh, doing, as I'm here, I'll show you the tuna. That's basic tuna. Again, two small tins because I couldn't, I couldn't find a larger one. But all ratios are depending on your budget and tastes. And I've just got some sweet corn. Don't need much of this, a small tin's fine. And it's just going to, you know, give it some texture. Just, you know, that one. That's right. Um, I just need, you know, um, I have washed my hands and everything before I started. Um, you just need something to give it some texture. Now it doesn't have to be sweet corn if you don't like it. You can use uh, sliced mushrooms, peas, um, mange too, it's very nice. But uh, with those, everything that's going into the sauce is basically cooked. You're just warming it through. To, so if you're going to use like very raw peas or um, or uh, mange too, you do need to steam them for a bit to uh, to soften them. Otherwise, it'll be they're a bit a bit too a bit too al dente. I think that yes, al dente, which is uh, Essex for raw. Okay, right. Put that in, and now. Oh, this is much harder than I thought. I thought I'd really have this sussed with the bowls, but... Oh. You see, you don't need much sweet corn. That made me too much. Put that there. Oh. Now, <laughs> you've got your basic sauce done. You need to season it. Now, uh, ground pepper. That's uh, got enough of that. And... Uh, I think dill goes very nice with fish, so I'll put a fair bit of dill in, dill in that. Now, that's basically the dish made. All you have to do is to, and I might cut this because, if I might cut this and just put a picture of the final dish on the website because I'll wait for the pasta to boil. The reason I didn't put the pasta on earlier is that I just thought I'm gonna get the timing wrong and the pasta's gonna be turning to mush by the time I'm ready to, to get the sauce in. But, uh, all you have to do, I'll, I'll tell you and I'll put pictures up, is when your pasta's um, finished cooking, which you can tell when it's a bit uh, soft all the way through, not not mushy, soft. Now uh, I've used tagliatelle, just this one, you know, it's any shape's fine. I mean, if it was, if it was, uh, they do one which is a little spaceman, I was tempted to use that, but they're sold out. There's obviously a lot of people cooking tonight, so I couldn't find that. I'm waffling. Right. So basically, you uh, cook your pasta, which if you if you need to know how to cook that, you really are in trouble. I'll be I'll do a video about boiling eggs for you next. Boil the pasta until it softens. Drain it off, which is what I'm all set up for. So I'm going to put it in the sieve when I've finished, and then never leave pasta on on its own because if you 
leave cooked pasta, it will just start setting. It will go into this horrible glutinous mush. So as soon as you've drained it, you've shaken the water off, put it back in the pan, pour the sauce over the top of it and stir it in. And that's your dish. It's so easy. Again, if you, if you, you know, if you, you can, if you want to make it even easier, don't fry the onions, don't put those in. So basically it's pasta, sour cream, uh, tuna and um, sweet corn. Now, something I would say is if your sauce is too thick, which, uh, you know, it shouldn't be because we've, we, we haven't drained the tins, so we've put the salt water in them. Not going well, hey. Um, if you need to thin your sauce, again, I've got some extra full fat milk. I put a splash of that until it's the right texture. And then basically you stir it together with the cooked pasta. And there's your, there's your uh, cunning linguine. And it's, I'd say it's got a very nice taste. The taste sort of, um, taste sort of kind of lingers. It's, it's very nice, very quick and very cheap. And that's today's cooking video over. Fantastic. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, not actually goodbye because I screwed up hitting the off button. But, you know, this is the Liberator Project. We expect these sort of mistakes. Okay, see you tomorrow. Goodbye.